Mr. Speaker, sir, I would like to call the attention of the Minister in Charge at Health and Family Welfare under Rules 54, one of the rules of procedure and conduct of business, to the news item published in Upejngo dated 21st February 2022, under the caption, Amyokam Penroy Kipai Block 1 Kwa Bandan Hamigalia. You may initiate notice. <coughs> Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, I would like to thank you for giving me this opportunity to raise this very important issue. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, Block 1 history, <coughs> historically was very much a part and parcel of the SY Gentia Poor Kingdom before the entire kingdom was annexed by the East India Company of the British in 1835 and after 1947 sir it was well within the boundaries of Jainty Hill district and falls under Jawai subdivision for administrative purpose as it ha had always been a part of the Ri Kadadaloi which when translated means the land of the 12 chieftains a nomenclature that is attributed to the traditional practice of administration among the Jaintia populace, and whose practice is still relevant today and constitutionally provided for by the constitution under the sixth schedule. Mr. Speaker, sir, it was in the year 1951, the then government of Assam <laughs> created the Mikir Hill District presently known as the Karbi Anglong District, by slicing off the Labang Namkulut and Pangam Reliang out of Jainty Hills under the political consideration of administrative convenience while neglecting all other relevant consideration which the people then vehemently opposed and understood it to be an imposition. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, sir, the people who reside in this area Arpanas, better known as Jaintias, and have the same language, custom, tradition, inheritance law, and other practices as the Jaintia people of Meghalaya. Even the prefix of the name of villages, rivers, streams, hills, and forests are of common use by the Khasi Panar across the length and breadth of the entire Khasi and Jaintia Hills district. For example, sir, the same words, Mo, Den, Um, Nong, Plangka, three extra. Mr. Speaker, sir, as per the information or the reports available with me, the Mikils or the Karbis, they were not the original inhabitants of this area, but were settlers only after the annexation of this area by the East India Company in 1935. Being tribal, sir, the Daloi ship of Nong Pelot, Nong Jingi, Shiliamontang, Raliang permitted them to stay only after an understanding was arrived at. However, sir, they coexist in peace and harmony, and there were even inter tribe marriages. Villages such as Um Kermi, Tapat, Ronghelen, Samatan came into existence much after the annexation. And Rong Pangbon village came into existence only after the creation of the Mikir Hills district. Sir. The Mikirs or the Karbis have a language of their own and a patrilineal lineage which is different from the Panar or Jaintias. So the people of Block 1, they vehemently oppose the imposition, white government notification of Assam number TAD slash R slash 31 slash 50 slash 149 dated 13 April 1951 for inclusion of this area under the newly created Mikir Hills district. And the same was even brought to the notice of the authorities of the SY United Khasi and Jainty Hill District 
and to the central government as well. So the effort to reunite the Gentia Hills led to the Assam government letter number TAD slash REV slash 9955 dated 21st November 1955 which directed the CM of Mikir Hills District Council to stop the survey of this area till the boundary of the Mikir Hills District is settled. And so in the year 1957, the Assam government by its letter TAD slash GA 83 slash 50 dated 5th November 1957 <coughs> directed the two district council Mikir and United Khasi Janji Hills District to hold a joint inquiry of the board of the boundary. And the same was conducted sir, on the 17th to the 19th of February and also on the 23rd of February 1958. And the survey was completed, sir. But however, the recommendation for the transfer of this area to Jantia Hills was never executed till date. In the year 1970, sir, well before the creation of Megalia, the Mikir Hills District Council, along with the active cooperation of the Assam State Police, erected cemented pil boundary pillars arbitrarily without the knowledge of the Jantia leaders, and also two police outposts were set up, one at Mukoiram and one at Umpawang village. These police outposts serve only the one purpose of harassing the in inhabitants of these disputed areas. Mr. Speaker, sir, I would like to remind this August House that in the recent past, an initiative, initiative was by late E.K. Maulong and Sri P.K. Mahanta, the Chief Minister of both of Meghalaya and Assam, respectively, had come to an agreement on the 22nd December 2000 on the Meghalaya government request to transfer the villages adjoining to Meghalaya border in area of Block 1 and Block 2, where the Kasipnar are in majority from Assam to Meghalaya. They agreed that a joint, joint verification by the Deputy Commissioner of the Karbi Anglong and the Jainty Hills be conducted in order to correctly identify these villages and complete it at an early date. Both the Chief Minister also agreed that as a constitution constitutional requirement, the opinion of both the Autonomous District Council concerned should be obtained. The Chief Minister also reiterated that the other outstanding issue involving both the state would also be sorted out in a true spirit of friendship and mutual respect. Mr. Speaker, sir, it has been 71 years now. 71 years of pain while keeping the struggle and hope alive. As reflected in the newspaper, sir, till now and forever, our people who reside in Block 1, they still yearn for the day when they'll be united with Meghalaya once again. So it is with a very heart that I stand to share with this August House, the neglect and apathy towards our very own kinsmen by successive government at the center, Assam, and to, extent, and to some extent, even Megalia. The untold sorrow, pain, hardship that they have to face, and they're still facing now, cannot be described by me, sir. Since April 13, 1951, they have been subjected to undue harassment by government officials of Assam and militant alike. They have been exhorted and deprived of their rights and properties. They have been arrested for no crime. They have been forced to pay taxes on land, houses. They are deprived of drinking water, healthcare, education, road connectivity, 
and electricity sir <coughs> and also mr speaker sir most recently on the 20th, 20th of september 2020 <coughs> a team of he heavily armed police personnel of the assam government they entered molobar village in the middle of the night and indiscriminately sir they fired more than 50 rounds from their automatic rifle in the air in a bid to terrorize the villages. Accordingly, sir, from my side, immediately I informed the state police who, visit, who visited the site and recovered expanded bullets and empty magazine. This was the case, sir where even such a big incident, it does not even appear on the newspaper. And also sir, on the 7th of January 2022, a youth who is identified as Nibok Langstang had ventured out to collect some firewood. He was arrested by the Assam police for no reason, and he was only released after the inter intervention of our district administration, sir. Until date, sir, people, especially from Mukro village, they keep on complaining, complaining to me time and again. They were complaining that they were taxed for carrying, carrying paddy straw, firewood, and personal use of timber. And that also, sir, they were taxed without the issuance of any type of challenge. And this was done by one forest check gate which was set up by the government of Assam at Kleshnero, just two kilometers away from Mukro village. There are many more cases which never find space in the newspaper. Such are the harassment that those people in Block 1 have to live with. They are subject to survive without the basic facilities, coupled with undue harassment. It is almost akin to a well-thought-out pogrom. Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, when we look at the healthcare sector, at present, sir, there's only one sub center which is located in Psir village. And to avail the services of this sub center, people such as from Mojem, Lamarang, Tapat, Skap, Extra, they have to travel distance of more than 20 kilometers. And also just to avail the healthcare facilities being provided by sub centers. Sir. So that so therefore, sir, I would like to request through you upon the government to kindly consider the setting up or the upgradation of the Psir sub center into a PHC or if possible, sir, to set up a PHC at Molobear village, which is a very ideally centrally located village in all of Block 1 area. And furthermore, sir, one very important issue that I raise from time to time, and that is the proposed to construct the Katmasla Mojem Jirikendeng Road. This is the only, the only road which links to all the villages inside the Block 1 area. I have made this proposal time and again, and I have even raised it in the floor of the, on the floor of the house, but till now we are yet to see the light of the day. So that's why I would like to request through you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir. Our government has, de has been kind enough in the past. They have done so many good things. They have provided so many new road connect connectivity. So I would like to urge upon the government, the Chief Minister, the Deputy Chief Minister, 
to kindly give a special consideration for the construction of the Katkasla Mojem Jirikendeng Road. And lastly, Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, in commending to efforts of our government towards the early result of the various border dispute, would it be wrong to request that the government to accord equal importance to this much neglected area and pursue in the right earnest to secure the rights at the earliest possible? Because even as I speak now, our people in these areas are suffering for no fault of theirs. It is a shame, sir, that in this 21st century, our people in this area are still subjected to live a life worse than the refugee of the present day, and that too in their own land, sir. I conclude by firmly urging upon the government to pursue this matter as early as possible in order to free our very own from the untold misery that I have been facing for the past 71 long years, sir. I thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, as I resume my seat. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> uh, Minister in charge to reply, please. Salve, please. <coughs> Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir. I'm uh, thankful to the Honourable Member, Sri Nujorki Sungo, MLA, who has tabled the call attention notice in this August House on the news item which appeared in the newspaper Upaitnor, dated 21st February 2022, under the caption Omyo Kam Penroy Kipait Ba Block 1 Kwa Ban Don Hab Meghalaya during the budget session of the Meghalaya Legislative Assembly 2002. Sir, uh, during his uh, deliberation and uh, participation, the Honorable Member has uh, touched on various aspects relating to Block 1. And um, while trying to reply to the issues concerned, there are two sections to this uh, entire issue that was raised by the Honorable Member. Uh, the first issue is pertaining to the history of the area and uh, the kind of uh, problems that the people at the border area are facing because of the border differences as, or the border dispute that has been there for a very long time uh, in Block 1 area and other parts of the state. The second part of his discussion was uh, related to the impact on the development aspects because of the different uh, issues in the border uh, area in, uh, in these areas mentioned in Block 1 and uh, how because of the law and order situation uh, different uh, development aspects have been affected. Sir, uh, I would like to start by saying that yes, there has been a lot of challenge in Block 1 area. And um, in the past, the people of this area have suffered uh, a lot. And uh, many development aspects because of the areas of differences and uh, uh, interventions, I should say, from different state governments and different administrations uh, in that area, sometimes from the Meghalaya administration, sometimes from the Assam administration, the people in and around the Block 1 area on both sides have been facing a large number of problems. But while these issues of uh, border dispute as well as uh, the, law, the law and order situation have prevailed, uh, there have been some areas where uh, development aspect also has come in. For example, the SSA building at uh, Molaber village, uh, it has been completed. The construction of the 15.517 kilometer interstate road between Meghalaya to Assam from uh, Mukro, Umpsar, 
uh, linking uh, Jinkindem Road under the Northeast Road Sector Development Scheme. Uh, the work is under progress. Uh, the construction of the RMSA building school at the CR village work is in progress and uh, is nearing completion. The repairing of the road from uh, Lapang, up, Lapang up to Kanduli under MG and REGA work is under progress. Uh, the metalling and black topping of a road from L042 Boroto to 18th kilometer of Kadiap uh, Lapping, Lapping Up Boroto Road, uh, 18 kilometers, upgradation batch 2 of 2018-19, package number MG0303-12. The work is under progress. In uh, Thadlaskan Sinadi block, water supply scheme for uh, uh, Rudumplu combined water supply scheme uh, was sanctioned in 16-11-2021 uh, for an amount of 9.254 crores. And the scheme, the scheme covers Kanduli, Umlangshore, and Rudumplu uh, village. But however, only Kanduli village falls under block one. Um, it is a pumping scheme and the allotment work is under finalization. Uh, also, the Lapangap combined water supply scheme was sanctioned on 26th of March 2021 for an amount of 5.08 crores. And the scheme covers two villages, uh, namely Lapangap and Tapatnar. It is also a pumping scheme, and the physical progress of the scheme is about 60%. Uh, there is also the PCR Katkasla uh, combined water supply scheme, uh, which was sanctioned in the year in, on the 17th of December 2020 for an amount of 4.52 crores. And the scheme covers uh, PCR and Katkasla village and it is a pump in scheme and the progress is 80 percent at the same time the Saba water supply scheme which was sanctioned on 11th of february 2022 for an amount of 3.013 crores the scheme covers the village of Saba. it is a pumping scheme and the allotment of the work is under finalization the mukro water supply scheme which was sanctioned on 16th of november 2021 for an amount of 7 crores, 42 lakhs. Uh, and uh, this is a gravity feed scheme, and the allotment of the work is under finalization. Um, Mr. Speaker, sir, the uh, Deputy Speaker, sir, the issues on development works in the border areas uh, are normally discussed and uh, resolved with the Deputy Commissioner or the Superintendent of uh, Police Border Coordination Committees. And uh, the meetings are held from time to time with the counterparts of the DCs and SPs from Assam. Uh, also, the Deputy Commissioner West uh, Jente Hills had a meeting with the Deputy Commissioner of West Karbialong District on the 6th of August 2021, where certain decisions were taken. Uh, both the sides agreed to maintain status quo on already completed development construction. Number two, keeping in view of the border talks at the Chief Minister level, it is desirable to maintain peace and tranquility in the border areas. Number three, regarding law and order issues, both sides will undertake close coordination to maintain peace and tranquility in and around the border areas. And number D, any development work shall be informed beforehand by both the counterparts. With regards to developmental works of Meghalaya, which are being obstructed by government of Assam officials, the Chief Secretary of Meghalaya has written to her counterpart in Assam to intervene and issue necessary instructions not to hinder in the development works that are meant for the benefit of the residents of the disputed areas along the interstate border. Uh, it was also agreed by both the state governments that central government schemes should be allowed to be implemented for the benefit of the people of the interstate border areas. Insofar as safety of the people living in the border uh, areas bordering Assam under Jinti Hills is concerned, the following steps are being taken. 
Number one, the concerned Deputy Commissioner has been taking up matters with his counterpart in Assam by protesting various develop, uh, developmental construction activities taken up by the Assam government in the disputed areas. In order to instill confidence in the minds of the villagers living along the interstate border with Assam, Meghalaya Police has intensified mobile and foot patrolling, especially in the areas of dispute. Magistrates and police are promptly taking action on all incidents having a bearing on law and order in this area. The District, of, District Police of West Jente Hills have been closely monitoring the developments in the border areas and are in constant contact with, the counterparts, uh, with their counterparts in Assam. So while, while uh, saying all these, uh, uh, while mentioning all these different developmental aspects and the meetings that takes place between the two um, district um, administrations, uh, so I would like to state here that uh, we are all aware about the the challenges that the people living in these border areas uh, have been facing for. Uh, the past five decades and that is precisely the reason why the uh, MDA government has been very firm that we must find a way forward to resolve the differences uh, that are there in these 12 areas and uh, that is why in the last six months and uh, also the statement that I had given yesterday clearly indicates the intention of this government to ensure that we find a solution not just to the first phase of six locations, but also the second phase of the six locations where Block 1, Khanduli, Pisiar, Block 2, all these areas come in. Uh, it would be premature on my part to comment on uh, how soon or how we will be able to resolve this issue, as we are all aware that this is a very complicated matter. But uh, as I had mentioned yesterday, that we are very, very close to resolving and to come to a uh, final agreement with uh, Assam, obviously with the intervention and support and coordination of the MHA, Government of India. And uh, we are hopeful that uh, within a few days, we should be able to actually uh, sign an, uh, an agreement uh, on these two uh, area on this um, first phase of six areas. And once that happens, it sets the precedent and it sets the principles on the basis of which the second phase of discussion will take place. Therefore, uh, without going too much into details, let me assure the honorable member and the entire house that, um, and obviously the, all the citizens of our state, especially those living in uh, the disputed or areas of differences, that we are committed to resolving this issue. That we are here to ensure that uh, this border issue and the areas of differences which have been there for the past five decades must be resolved. As mentioned by the honorable member, the people in this area have suffered for too long for no mistake or no fault of theirs. And we as a government are very much aware of that situation. And therefore we are moving very aggressively and I am very hopeful that uh, we will see the light of day when we'll be able to actually resolve the issues even in the rest of the six areas. But as I said, let me not uh, go into details of that right now because we are still in the first phase. But I am very, very optimistic that we will be able to find a solution even in those slightly more complicated areas like the Block 1, Pasir and Kanduli areas that are there. So while I say that, uh, I have also noted down the uh, request made by the honorable member regarding some of the important roads uh, that he had mentioned, uh, the uh, Khartaslang Maujer Road uh, that he had mentioned out here. Uh, I have taken a note of that. I have also taken the note of the upgradation he has mentioned in the PCR subcenter to a PHC, also the uh, Molobair uh, um, PHC, which he has mentioned is a very central 
uh, location. I'll definitely get these matters examined, as uh, uh, has always been uh, very clear from the state government side, that uh, we have been very clear that road connectivity is a priority for this government. At the same time, ensuring that the social sectors, especially health and education, must also be given priority from the government. So therefore, I will definitely get this uh, examined, but uh, I cannot uh, give a commitment without discussing with the concerned department. But let me assure the member that I have noted it down, and definitely we will examine uh, all these aspects of development that are there. And at the same time, let me also assure that apart from the talks that are taking place, the overall um, the relationship that is there and the kind of discussions that are taking place between Assam government and Meghalaya government, uh, I must say that uh, uh, it's at a, at a completely different level. Today, the discussions that take place between the Assam government, between the Assam chief minister and chief minister of Meghalaya uh, is at a very different level compared to how it was before. And uh, whether it is officially or even at unofficial level, in fact, when there are situations that we face out here in the state where even small incidents take place, with the help of technology, I'm able to communicate it immediately to the Honorable Chief Minister of Assam, and we get the response uh, at the same time. Similarly, if there are any issues that come up, he also communicates to me immediately, and we are able to resolve small issues also uh, within a very short time. At the same time, the, both the Chief Ministers have uh, made it very, very clear that we will not allow these differences to affect the development programs. So any central sponsored scheme, whichever state may implement it, you know, that will not affect the ownership or the administrative control of that particular area. So therefore, uh, implementation may be, be done by Assam because it just so happened that the scheme came through Assam at that point in time. But that does not mean that when the discussions on the boundary issue take place, that who implemented the scheme will become a factor in deciding which area it should go to. So we are very clear on these aspects that the development aspect, whether it is Meghalaya implementing it or Assam implementing it, it should not be stopped and the people should get the required developmental programs that they deserve. And number two, whenever there are any kind of law and order situations, we have ensured that time and again instructions are given to both the administrations, both from the Chief Minister of Assam and from Meghalaya, that we have to ensure that these kind of incidents should not happen. And in any situation where these unforeseen incidents do happen, immediate action must be taken to ensure that uh, these issues are resolved. Of course, at the ground level, many things could happen. It's not a very simple situation. And obviously, we cannot guarantee that nothing will happen. Things can happen because it's a very complicated situation. Many emotions are there. Many situations are very complicated. But what I'm trying to say is that uh, we are in a position at this point in time to be able to respond to that in a very, very quick manner and to ensure that we minimize these kind of unforeseen situations. So, Deputy Speaker, sir, I am sure that this subject is such that we can keep uh, uh, going on. And uh, because, as I said, it's a very important subject. It's a very emotional subject. And as mentioned by the honorable member, people have suffered in that area for a very long time. But uh, let me assure you, whether it's a development aspect or whether it is the aspect of uh, the uh, border issue, this government is very much aware and we are very much committed to take things forward and find a solution both to development issues as well as the border issue that is there in those areas. So with these few words, sir, I thank the honorable member for raising this issue. And uh, with these few words and clarifications, I would like to resume my seat. Thank you, thank you sir. <clears throat> May I know the uh, honorable members who made the call attention motion want to seek any clarification or not? Uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, I, as I've said before, uh, many, many development things that are happening inside uh, Around, in and around the border of uh, Block 1 area. But most of the villages, which are deep inside the Block 1 area, sir, suppose the example of Muriap, Muknar, Lumpia, 
demu kendiliar mukim menuju banding senongka kum selat leher lomu jam dan nanggala mu jam skap selat ekstra all these villages are yet to see any type of development happens in their village so for this uh, very important issue i will just like to apprise the government sir, that in and around the border of block one area many developmental things happen but what i'm talking is that deep inside the territory of uh, block one area sir. so i hope the government will take and i'm very sure also that our cm will take serious note of this and especially for the Kat Kaslam Mujam Jikin Dengrut. Thank you, sir. Sir, I've taken note of the points mentioned by him. Thank you, sir.